All right, so this video should, oh my gosh, I pray help out the seniors who are just feeling lost this quarter. Maybe you missed some of the introductory stuff. Uh, maybe you have just not caught what is going on this quarter. So we'll try to make this video short and to the point. This quarter, we are doing what we're calling a poet study. Uh, you are selecting one of three poets and you will be doing a deep dive into their work and basically doing a presentation nearly identical to what you did last quarter on that poet where you are diving into some of their history and doing some work with their poetry. Uh, so this is week three, so we're not too far ahead. I believe there's only one thing in the grade book. So we're going to start on Canvas. Everything you need should be on Canvas. Um, and the main place for that is going to be here in modules. All right, so it would be wise to just start going through each day's modules and trying to piece together maybe what happened in class that day. Um, so like we had a welcome back survey the first day. Um, if you wanna fill that out and then let me know that you did. Um, what we're also doing is we're reading a story out loud in class. It's called Soul. So each day you'll notice um, this cover here. It's about a Nepalese girl who is sold. Um, and I don't want to spoil too much because we're only about 60 pages in. Um, but she lives in a small mountain village um, and is now heading for the city to where her life will um, change forever. Uh, this first week we talked about the intersection between arts and politics uh, and we'll come back to that in the next couple of days probably at the end of this week um, and this is the week of May 3rd. So then yeah you can just kind of go through each of these um, documents here. Let's see here's a discussion post we did the first Wednesday um, and just to speed this up, I'm going to go back to modules. Um, so the first thing you're really going to want to actually do after you kind of go through and just familiarize yourself with the content is where it says turn in poetry portfolio here. Um, there are instructions and basically what you're doing is you are, let's wait for it to load, going down here to this assignment where it says turn in link um, you are making a brand new Google Doc, and then you are turning in the share link. So what that looks like is this. You're going to open up this assignment, and it has the instructions here, and it also has a video where I walk you through it, but I'll show you real quick. We have the instructions for how to turn in our poetry portfolio. We are going to uh, hit the turn in button. That's going to open up this place for us to turn in a website URL. So I'm going to open up to a new um, docs.new. I think this should be a shortcut to a new Google Doc. It is, good for me. Um, so however you can make a new Google Doc, make a new one that you have easy access to, that's an important part, and make sure it's in your P12 email or with that Google account. You're gonna hit the share button and you're gonna to to title it first. So I'm just gonna title it um, with my name. So you'll put your name and then I'm just gonna call it Poetry Portfolio. Okay. So then I'm going to get the share link. I'm gonna make sure I change it so that anyone or anyone with this link can edit. I need to be an editor. And then you're going to copy that and that's the link you are going to turn in. So here, down here where it says website URL, you're going to copy and paste right in there and you're gonna submit that assignment. Eventually in your poetry portfolio, you are going to want to go back and copy and paste in the poems from last quarter. So if you wrote any of the, I think there are at least three poems we wrote last quarter copy and paste those in there. Okay, the, th the second thing I want you to do 
is that first grade in the grade book, which is writing five haiku. So we covered what haiku are, I believe this Friday, the 23rd, and then you actually had an assignment to write five haiku. It's really simple. What you do is you go back to your poetry portfolio and you write five haiku. Remember haiku is a style of poetry that has five syllables, seven syllables, and then five syllables. So I'll show you how easy these are to write. Haiku are easy. I can write them in my sleep. Uh, last one, based on recent experience, don't steal from the web. Yeah, don't try to Google haikus and then copy and paste them. These need to be your own original writing. All right, so that's one. You'll just do four more. When I, I sat down, I wrote my own. Um, takes less than five minutes, really easy. Everyone should get a four on this. So that's your first graded assignment. Okay, and there's a video with examples and longer explanations here about haiku. All right. So when you have completed that assignment, you'll have to email me and let me know that you've completed it so I can go in and get you a grade for that. Um, so now, what are we actually doing? Well, last week, week two, the week of the 26th of April, we looked into the life of three different poets, um, E.E. E. Cummings, and then who did we do on Tuesday? And Tuesday, I believe, was Carolyn Forche. So if you want to go back and read about these poets before you make your decision, I would highly recommend that. And then on Thursday, we studied um, or learned just a little bit about Sonia Sanchez. And that's the third of the three poets, E.E. E. Cummings, Carolyn Forche, Sonia Sanchez. I encourage you highly to watch some of these videos, to do your own research, and really get a feel for who these poets are. And then on Friday, you, we watched just one more video about or by each of the poets, and then you selected which poet you are most interested in. Okay, so make sure you fill out this Google Doc or this uh, Google form. Put your name, which period you're in, who your poet is, and then why you chose them. So then we get to Monday, that's today. Today, the 3rd of May. And we're talking about annotation. So what that means is you get your, cop your own copies of the poems and you're literally writing in the margins. You are interacting with the poem. So if this were a book, you know, you might have something that looks like, like this, where you're, you know, commenting on it. You are in your own handwriting, describing what's going on. But of course, you don't have this as a book. So we have it, it digitally. And we're using the Kami software that we've been using all year. So, for example, if you decide that you want to read E.E. E. Cummings as your poet, and I really encourage you to think about that. He's probably the most difficult of the three to really get. Um, I love uh, Sanchez and Forche both. E. Cummings is pretty good as well. So yeah, maybe make sure you read over the poet selections really before you make your choice, but you're only going to choose one of these. So if I choose E.E. E. Cummings, I'm gonna open up this assignment here and I'm gonna look at the instructions. It looks like I need to annotate in three different ways, literally looking at the poetic qualities and then making questions and connections. Um, so that's going to open up this Kami document. And this Kami document here is my own copy. So nobody else gets to write on this. This is all me. This is my own copy. So what do I do with this? Well, today in class, we just picked one poem, just one, 
I mean, you'll see here there's about 10 or so. So I'm just going to pick one and I'm going to practice annotating it. So somewhere on the margins using the comment feature, I'm going to try to figure out what is the poem saying? What is there a story this poem is trying to tell? Uh, then I'm going to be looking at poetic devices. This is something we talked about as a class. Um, the links to it are on today's Canvas page. It's right here at the top under vocab. And that's just a list of poetry terms that look like this. So I'm going to be looking for things like repetition. I'm going to be looking for things like rhyming. I'm going to be looking for things like enjambment. All of these uh, fancy poetry words I'm going to try to practice using when reading my E.E. E. Cummings poem. Um, and then finally, I'm going to be making connections or seeing how I can connect this poem to other things I know, have learned about, have read, have watched. I'm going to try to ask questions like, what doesn't make sense? What am I confused about? Um, and then I'm going to maybe try to figure out like, what is the purpose of this poem? What questions is it trying to answer? So once you've done that, you'll practice, you know, using, for example, use the comment feature. Maybe you really like um, this word pedal. And so you'll just use a comment feature. I like his use of the word petal here. I think this could be referencing, da, da, da. you know, if you want to make a connection, that's how you'd make a connection. You're saying like, oh, I'm reading this thing. Um, here's where else I see it. So just practice that. Um, if there's something that's interesting, you know, you can use the markup feature to highlight stuff, whatever floats your boat. This first one is really just practice. <sighs> um, and if you do all of those things, even if it's a little confusing at the end, like with the annotations, as long as you're trying, um, that will get you caught up. That will get you caught up as of May 3rd, Monday. Okay, so that should kind of wrap up this whole ordeal. Let me leave student view here. Uh, make sure you come to office hours on Wednesday uh, from 1030 to 11, or if those times don't work for you, shoot me an email so we can set up an appointment. But other than that, we are going to end this video and I will see you in class.